Now, the colors red and blue might not mean a lot to you, but as soon as I add one word, you will love it to death. And that one word is... Pokemon. Pokemon Red and Blue were the first Pokemon games to be released outside of Japan. The game became an instant classic and also a huge hit, selling a total of 47 million copies in all those years. Now that's all fine and dandy, but there's only one thing that all of you want to see in this video, and that's glitches. And oh boy, the first Pokemon had some weird glitches and problems, from fighting certain trainers to manipulating the game. Let's start with something called the Trainer Fly Glitch or Long Range Trainer Glitch. And this has some... weird effects. Trainers in Pokemon Red are either long ranged or short ranged. The short ranged ones don't reach over the entire screen. However, the long range trainers can watch over the entire screen. Characters only get loaded once they are on screen, so they always look south for one frame before turning into the direction they are supposed to look at. If you now load a long range trainer while being in his field of view, you have one frame to hit start as he needs to turn to your direction first so he can see you. If you now press start and fly away, he will notice you, but you will fly away regardless. This will mess up a few values as you are supposed to be in a battle and makes things such as passing impossible for now. Now you have to do a different fight to enable most actions again. However, the game still has the old map memorized and the trainer you were supposed to battle. If you now go back to that map, the menu will pop up automatically. If you close it, a battle will start depending on the special value of the last used Pokemon you fought in the last battle. Now this glitch opens the door to something very special. A Pokemon that you all might know and love... Mew. Yes, by using this glitch you can catch your very own Mew, and it's actually not that hard to pull off when you know the stats. You start off by doing the trainer fly glitch, fly away and fight a trainer whose last Pokemon has a special stat of 21. This trainer right here. Your menu will come up once you go back to the map you were before. If you close this one, the game will assume that you still need to do a battle and will use the special value of the last fought Pokemon in the actor list. In this case, this is number 21. And that Pokemon is Mew. So now you're in a battle with Mew and you can do whatever you want. You can catch it, defeat it, whatever, your choice. And you can use this glitch to catch any Pokemon you want. Now Thiefbug uses a Pokeball here to catch Mew. But that's impossible. But this isn't the only thing we're going to do with this glitch. We're going to unveil a dark secret and put an end to it. He is a renowned Pokemon professor and Pokemon master. Professor Oak. A battle with Professor Oak is programmed in, although he never actually battles the player during regular gameplay. You could pull off the same trick to fight Professor Oak, but you would have to fight a Pokemon with a special value of 226. However, there is no trainer with such a value in this Pokemon. So you have to fight a random trainer, then encounter a ditto while having a Pokemon with 226 special in your team yourself. Let the ditto transform into that Pokemon, defeat it and go back to the map where you did the trainer fly glitch. The menu will come up and upon closing it you will finally encounter Professor Oak. Oak is programmed with three different teams each consisting of a level 66 Taurus, a level 67 Executor, a level 68 Arcanine, and a level 70 Gyarados. His fourth Pokémon is level 69 and is either a Venusaur, Blastoise, or Charizard. It is assumed that the game would choose the team with the final evolution of the starter Pokémon that neither the player nor the rival chose. Additionally, based on this team and their levels, it is likely he was supposed to appear at the very end, perhaps even after the final rival battle at Indigo Plateau. When defeated, and counting the fact that Professor Oak used one of the valid roasters mentioned above, he will give whatever dialogue that the trainer you used to fight him says when defeated. This means that he has no real lost battle dialogue of his own programmed in. But don't be sad. The concept of battling a Pokemon Professor would later be reused in Pokemon X and Y. So after all, you're not missing out on anything. Now we want to show off one last trick, which was actually found quite recently and is used in any percent speedruns. It's called RNG manipulation. 
Whenever the game starts, it generates random numbers every frame. These numbers depend on frame number, but also on the inputs the player presses each frame. Things like the encounters and the stats of Pokemon you encounter depend on this value. If you do a save at a specific point in the game and follow a precise follow-up of inputs, you can manipulate the game to always give you a Nidoran with perfect stats or always give you a Paras in Mount Moon. For example, this is the exact spot to get the perfect Nidoran. Now we did this a couple of times with the Nidoran to show off that it actually works. Here, have a look at the stats. They are exactly the same. We also repeated this process but with a little error in it. And as you can see the stats changed all because of that small mistake. So essentially you manipulate the game's mechanics to get the Pokemon that you want. This way a speedrun where you have to complete the game as fast as possible becomes a lot faster. Since you can get a perfect Nidoran every run. And now to catch Pikachu! So uh, yeah we're done here. Great that you watched the entire video! If you want to watch more videos, click the annotations on the screen right now. And you can always subscribe. Then you won't miss a thing.